Okay, so we're at Comp uh, 1050 Animation 2D Tools, and it's uh, week three, part one, uh, part two, and we're talking about Action Script. So again, Flash uses Action Script as the way to wire up uh, different interactivity uh, for the different movies that we're going to be creating, right? So let's talk about some basic terminology uh, and things for Action Script. Okay, so Action Script is very similar to JavaScript. But they're different, obviously. Um, what we can do is when we when we create JavaScript or sorry Action Script, we can do it here in this development environment. Um, and something that the slide doesn't say is you can also do it outside of the development environment. When we create, for example, Action Script classes, we don't need to do that here in this environment. We can do it outside in a separate document. Um, on the um, Mac side. There's something called Flash Builder that you can actually get for your uh, um, as a uh, part of the package from the Creative Suite products. Here, unfortunately, in the class, for whatever reason, they didn't include it. So there is no Flash Builder package on on the, in the on the computer in front of you here. Um, and what it is actually is a, it's, it's something that you guys know about. It's an Eclipse-based editor that's much better than Flash the Flash environment itself when it comes to developing classes and doing action script. It just is better. If you're using the PC and you have Flash on your PC, right, um, there's an actual very good um, open source program you can download called Flash Develop. Right? It's open source and it's only available for the PC, Flash Develop. And I encourage you to take a look at that when we get into classes. But for now, we're going to do everything inside the Flash development environment itself. Okay, so this is assuming you have no programming knowledge, but I put these slides up here for reference. Okay, So we know what a variable is. Let's talk about keywords. There's a lot of reserved words that are built into uh, ActionScript itself. Um, var, for example, is the exact same keyword to define a variable in ActionScript as well as JavaScript. It's exactly the same, right? In fact, you'll see the similarities when we start going. Arguments are pretty much the same. Functions are defined almost exactly the same. Um, objects, on the other hand, the way we we uh, we create objects, and it doesn't matter whether it's a sound object or some kind of symbol uh, or whatever, it has to be. You have to have. You have to call them through their instance names. Okay. Methods. There's a lot of built-in methods. Some of the really important ones are stop. <laughs> Seriously, stop. S T O P. Right? Uh, go to and play, go to and stop. We're going to talk about these basic methods that you should be using to, for timeline management with Flash. Right? And different properties. For example, different objects have your x and y coordinates, uh, your scaling, your horizontal and vertical scale, height and width, and so on. Right? Which you see me kind of doing these little demos that I've done for you already. Um, at the end of any line of code, you have to use a semicolon, just like in JavaScript. Right? Um, we use the dot operator for uh, the dot accessor to access methods uh, and properties of an object. All right? And uh, sorry, comments are done with the double slash, double forward slash, or the uh, forward slash star star back uh, star backslash. Sorry, star forward slash to be do the same kind of comment structure as you you would normally do uh, in um, CSS. Okay, or even in JavaScript. Same kind of thing. So comments are ignored just like they normally would be. Um, keywords are going to be highlighted. When they're highlighted, they're, they appear in blue in the Actions panel. Uh, in Flash Builder and Flash Develop, they're going to have other colors, and you can set them up the way you'd like them. Um, you're also going to have variable names. They're going to appear in black. Strings in Flash itself, is going to, they're going to appear green. And ActionScript ignores uh, anything that comments, like for example, uh, uh, that, that ActionScript is going to ignore, it, they appear in gray. And there's going to be a lot of stuff that, they, that, that you're going to see appear in gray. Okay? You can check the syntax of your lines in your Actions panel. We're going to show you that in a second by clicking the syntax icon. Right? So it's, again, is this a true development environment, robust the way uh, you know, you're used to? Probably not. Right? But for a fast little scripting uh, language and the stuff that you can use, it's pretty good. And we'll show you, I'll give you a, kind of a, some hints of what you can do to make the most of it. Okay. How do you get to the Actions panel? You've got to go Windows Actions. And I recommend, I'm going to go back to Flash here for a second. 
I recommend that you set it up as a little icon here, and that's what I've done. So if you notice, I've set up my actions panel. I've wired it right to my to my uh, uh, my toolbar over here, right? So I can always get to it. If I click onto it, there it is, right? Because I use it a lot. I also put there uh, my create JS toolkit. I've got that in there because I want to do a little bit of that. I've got my external library for common buttons, assets, and so on. I've got that there. And other things that are included here we're going to talk about. But I've kind of wired it up here because I don't want to keep going to window, you know, kind of thing, actions. I don't want to keep doing that over and over again. It's kind of a waste of time for me. I just want to have one button to do it. And I want it right here. Okay. Uh, in the panel, we're going to be able to write, debug, format, edit, find code. We're going to be, to be able to do all kinds of stuff. But action script is not is not written, is not held in, the, in a container like one big uh, a parcel of code here in, in your Flash environment, like it would be in another code, another program when you're coding something. It's not like that. And we'll talk about that in a second. Okay, so if you're looking at the actions panel itself, right, let's go back. So here's the actions panel. There's a bunch of buttons here. On the on the left is some um, built-in classes and examples. Right, that I can kind of drill down, and I can, I can even uh, go so far as to uh, get information on what they are, and double-click would actually uh, allow me to, um, to install the code without writing a single thing. All your code, in fact, is, is all here on the left, okay? If you want not to write anything, if you want action script to be written for you. I don't do it that way, though. To be honest with you, I just kind of write, and away we go. Okay, but you could, literally, looking at the left here, you could look at all the, all the libraries here and drag and drop or double click any item that you need from here onto the stage. Okay. The other thing is there's, there's something else on the here this, from a, a, uh, an explorer perspective. Down here in this panel, you can actually ex explore which frame, right, as an example, your action script is wired into because action script is going to be contained in a particular frame on the timeline, right? So um, it has to be wired up that way or else it won't work, right? Not in the, the Flash development environment, right? If you're running it outside of Flash in, for example, Flash Builder or even in a text file, you can, add it, you can edit Flash, uh, sorry, ActionScript in anything, even things like uh, uh, Text Wrangler or, or Notepad++ or whatever. You could do that and wire it up by putting up the, you know, creating a, a class. But that's kind of something we're going to handle later on when we get into games. Right, so for now, I'd ask, avoid doing that for, for a better understanding. Otherwise, you're going to confuse yourself. Please don't do it right now. You could. Is it super like, you know, uh, rocket science, crazy, hard? No, it's not. But don't do it because we want to kind of follow with me is what I'm asking. Okay. We got a couple of buttons up here, too. If I click the plus button, right, it's going to add in a new item to the script. And I can actually pull down or add another item in here. If I want to go, for example, flash events. I can pull it down this way. I want to create a, um, a scroll event, and I want to do, as an example, um, you know, I can look at a particular property or a position, or I can do a scroll, the scroll event itself. It'll actually say, new scroll event, and here I'm creating a new scroll event. It'll actually start writing it for me. Another way of doing it from here. If I click the plus button. I can also do things like I can insert a target path if I want to, just like I do with... Uh, Dreamweaver or, another, or other Adobe products. Here, it's going to ask me to, it, it looks like a little doctor's uh, stethoscope, right? And it allows me to start my debug options. I can toggle breakpoints and so on. I can add in on the top bar here, I can add in a comment block. I can remove a comment block. I can apply line comments. I can also show and hide the toolbox. Right, let's, I'll do that, do that right now so I can get maximum uh, code spacing, right? Here it is, I'm hiding and showing the cool, uh, toolbox. I can also click on code snippets, and I can, I can add in code snippets that are already pre-built pieces of code that I can include in my timeline. Right? I can do all these things. I'm going to go back. And there's also the... Um, I can use the, uh, uh, the little wand tool to build scripts for me as well. But we're going to try and write everything by hand because we're programmers, because that's the kind of guys that we are, right, and girls. A little bit about the toolbar for you. Okay. 
So let's prepare the timeline a little bit because we want to kind of add in uh, some information. Um, and the first thing we want to kind of do is I want to add in some frames for the buttons so that they span at least 50 frames in the time for, and timeline. So we're going to go to the buttons layer. Here we are, right? And I want to choose frame 50 and I'm going to insert frame. So now, as an example, all the buttons are replicated until frame 50. And I'm going to do the same thing for the other layers. So I'm going to take the title layer and I'm also going to take the, um, the, the background layer and I'm going, to I'm going to insert frames for them as well. So now it looks, should your, your movie should look kind of like this. So for 50 frames, you know, and again, we're at 24 frames a second, so that's basically uh, two seconds, right? We've got uh, the, our assets are going to remain on the stage. That's the first thing we need to do. The next thing we need to do is we want to add a stop action because now we've got frames, there's different frames in the timeline, but the way the movie works is as soon as your movie is, is, uh, is started, it's going to play. It's going to want to play. Now, right now, nothing's really happening in our main timeline, right? But we want to make it so that before we do anything, you know, we want the timeline to stop, right? So we want to kind of, pre uh, you know, create a stop action for Flash, the first thing that we do. Okay, we want to stop the playhead from moving forward. And the way to do this is we're going to first add an actions layer, right, to the timeline. So we're going to go to the buttons timeline. We're going to click onto it, and they're going to add new layer. And we're going to call this layer actions. And this, my friends, is where all the your action script is going to reside on the actions layer, all right? Not in the button layer or not in another layer. Keep it in a separate layer. It's nice and clean and then you can always find your action script. If you keep your action script in different layers, it will be lost. <laughs> It'll be hard to find. It'll be a pain in the ass. Yes, there's ways of finding it using the actions panel, but why bother? Why do it any other way when you can see it? Okay. First thing we do, we added a layer. Next thing what we want to do is I want to click on the first uh, frame of the actions layer, right? And then open up my windows, my actions panel, all right? So here I am, click on the first, I have to actually physically click on it. Then I open up my actions panel. I got the little shortcut here, which I encourage you to do as well. Right now I'm here and I type in stop. And once I've done that, if you notice on the left hand side here, it's added in scene one, which is my main stage. Here's my actions for my current frame, right? For frame one, it's added this stop action. And really, let me explain what the stop does. It stops the timeline. It stops your playhead. But really what we're saying here is because what's my reference? I'm using a method. What is my method working on? And this is kind of advanced, but I'm going to say it like this. My method is working off of the stage. So really what I'm doing here is I'm saying stage stop. That's what I'm really doing here. Okay, I'm not just saying stop. Stop is, is relevant because just like if in a class, I don't have to say this stop. If I'm within a class itself, all I have to say is stop in this particular case. If I wanted to be specific, I could do this. I could say stage dot stop and that would work as well, right? But we don't need to do that. Stop is sufficient in this particular context. I'm also going to save my work because that's the kind of guy that I am. And then I'm going to exit the, the actions panel by clicking the button again. So now I've got a stop action. If you notice here, there's a little A that's inside this keyframe here. It's a tiny, tiny little A. Right? If I click away from it, you can see it better. Right? There it is. That means that there's an action, some action script that's embedded in that keyframe. You can break up your action script, just FYI and warning, in different keyframes all over your timeline. Right? which is a pain in the ass to find, right? That's why we use, and we will use as we get into uh, developing games, classes, and we'll get away from this unorganized stuff. We may use a few things on the timeline because it makes sense, it makes it easier to use, but we'll try and get away from it and use classes. Okay, so we've already done that. Now we're gonna create this event handler for the button. And again, event handlers, whether it's here or whether it's in another language, what are they? They're events that are triggered by an action from the user. So if we hover over something, it creates a hover event. If we click on something, it, it creates a click event. You know, different events, like we know in other languages, they create these uh, uh, messages, and we have to create a listener for these messages, right? 
Okay, so let's write our first piece of code. So what we're going to say is this. Um, we're going to basically add an event listener, but we have to add it in for the button itself, right? That's what we're going to have to add in for the button. So if we were going to write an event listener for a button, right? Let's say it was called button one, right? Here's an example. I've put it in red for you to see. The general form is this. What are you listening to? The stage? Because you can have write an event listener for the stage as well. If someone clicks on the stage, you can say stage dot add event listener. And then when someone clicks on the stage or does something to the stage, you can you can respond to it, right? Or um, is it a button? So where are you listening to? You click, you put in add event listener. What event are you listening for, right? And what's your response to your to the event? And the response is a function that you're going to kind of you're going to describe, right? Okay. So here's an example. So let's say for example we're we're going to create a function called show image. Right, the show image function is going to um, is going to fire when we click on a button. Right, so it's the second part. The, what the first part is going back is doing this. Whatever the button is called, add event listener. We're going to create a mouse event dot click event, and we're going to tell it it's going to go to when when this a mouse button clicks on it, it's going to go to the show image one event or function. All right, here's the show image one function we're going to define, and now what it's going to do is it's going to say my event, which is, the, which is a variable of type mouse event, and we're going to wire up this, this function in here with different commands. Okay, that's the basic form. So you can use this as a, a reference card again. Let's do a real example now. We've already defined Gable Lawful button as an instance of the Gable Lawful button, right? So now all I have to do is put this in the, um, we can kind of place this text in, into the uh, uh, the uh, actions panel. Let's try that. So we'll go to the actions panel. Okay, now Flash is not smart enough to know about instances. You have got to let Flash know. So I know it's called Gable Lawful bu uh, underscore button, right? Is the one. I'm going to click dot. And if you notice, oh no, my code hinting, where did it go? Oh no, how come? Right? Unfortunately, Flash is not good at doing code hinting when you start putting in a, a type of um, object that it doesn't know anything about. You can try doing one of two things though. On the top of your actions panel, there's something called show code hint. It won't work here because it doesn't understand what Gable Lawful button is, right? So you have to type in that long uh, line of code, which is add capital E event capital L listener. But you do that, and if you've typed it incorrectly, it's going to appear blue. Okay? Open parentheses. And when you type the open parentheses, now you can go and do your, on the top there's a show code hint. I can show the code hint. And it's going to allow me a little pull down of what I want to type in there. What I want to listen for again, of course, is mouse event. Right? So I can start typing mouse event. And then look, it gives me the exact um, class that I'm accessing here. C for class, big C for class. Double click and it's going to say, hey, Gable Lawful button, add a event listener. I'm listening for a mouse event. What kind of mouse event am I listening for? Dot accessor, click. That's the type of mouse event I'm looking for, a mouse click event, right? Comma, after I've, after I've heard the event, what do I do with it, right? Well, I've got to click, I've got to put in some kind of of function, and I'm going to call fun restaurant one as a function. So I'm going to put in inside the the actions panel, restaurant one semicolon. So there's my event listener. Let me just uh, hide this panel here so you can see more of it. There we go. So that's the first thing I've written up. I've wired up an event listener, but right now there isn't any function attached to it, right? And no, notice right away when I typed it in, Flash added an import statement. You were asking me for an import statement with JavaScript, right? Remember? Flash has import statements. Uh, ActionScript has imp import statements, not like JavaScript. See? So it says import flash.events.mouse event. I'm actually importing that library because I want to listen to all the mouse events right now. Okay, that's the first thing that I've added in. Now I've got to define a function. So I go function, it's a special keyword, it, it comes in uh, in this purple color or whatever. Then I go the name of the, the function, restaurant, right? In brackets, 
what type of event am I listening for? Well, I'm going to put in a, an event. Okay? Now, when I click on colon, right, it's going to say, what data type am I casting this variable event? What am I doing? And the data type is going to be mouse event, right? So if I, if I start typing mouse event, right, that's the one I'm wanna, I want to listen for, close parentheses. So what I'm saying is, when restaurant one, it should be called restaurant one, not restaurant, restaurant one is, is, uh, is called, I'm listening for an event. I'm going to receive this mouse event data, right? Now, at the end of my function declaration, I got to declare what my function is returning. And right now, because my function is a event listener and I'm not returning anything, it's going to, it's going to return void. So I got to put colon void. And most of our functions that we're going to use when we create event listeners, they're going to be returning void too, unless we actually want to return some value. Okay, let's take a look at this. Um, I have to put in this code block, these, these curly braces, just like you see in other languages, other C-style languages, JavaScript and so on. You have to put these curly braces in order for us to do something. Okay, I'm going to save that, go back to our PowerPoint, just to make sure everyone's on the same page, right? So I've, I've created this restaurant one uh, mouse event. And now look what it's going to say. It says, go to and stop 10. Well, that's what they want us to do. We want, they want us to put this, this, this uh, timeline control into the, the, the function, right? Or the method that we're calling restaurant1 we've just created, right? But restaurant1 is going to point to, it says go to and stop 10. Well, there's nothing on 10. It's just another frame right now. So we're going to have to create something there for it to do something when we go to that, to that part of the event or that, that part of the timeline. So let's put that in there, go to and stop 10. So I'm going to go back, I'm going to start typing, go to capital A and capital S, stop, 10. It's, in, it's a member, it's in camel case, right? So I've told Flash to do something here. Go to and stop 10. This is for restaurant number one. Okay, well, similarly, we want to write them for the rest of the restaurants. So let's just do the same thing. We're going to copy and paste all the other ones for Gary Gary, the Gary Gary button, the El Piato button, and we're going to go, instead of uh, go to and stop 10, we're going to go 10, 20, 30, 40, okay? And it's not going to be just restaurant one all the time, it's going to be restaurant one, two, three, four. Now, there are ways, just like there are in other languages, of sharing an event handler. We're not going to do that here. We're just going to write one event handler per, for now, okay? Let's go back. So. I'm going to write them here. So I'm going to take this information, these two functions, this, this, uh, the actual uh, uh, event listener call and the function, copy, give it a little bit of space, paste. Give it a little bit of space, paste. One more time, paste. I'm going to change up the easy stuff first. The go to and stop is going to go 20, 30, just so I don't forget, 40. The next thing I'm going to change is the, the name of the restaurant, the re name of the, uh, of the, of the uh, function or method. So once with restaurant one, now it's restaurant two, restaurant three, restaurant four. Same thing here. Now you could have done this different ways. This is the way I did it. So I've got different functions that are wired up for different calls. But now they're the same button. I've got to change the button names. So the button right now is the same. The second one is Gary Gary. Uh, I think the next one is Il Piatto. I'll check that spelling in a second. And the third, the last one is, um, God, I can't remember. <laughs> Here it is. Pierre Platters. Let's just make sure that it's all spelled properly, and it is. And now that I've done all that little bit of uh, some changes here, well, should I call this coding? No, <laughs> it's copy and paste, people. And then I want to save everything. All right, so I've told it to go to these 10, 20, 30, 40 kind of thing. What I'm going to do now, because I'm a nervous kind of guy, is I'm going to run my movie, right? Just to make sure there's no errors. Oh, and there is an error. Let's take a look at it. 
It still does this, right? I can click on it and go somewhere, but it doesn't really do anything. It says, error, scene one, layer, actions, frame one, line 23, axis of undefined property, Pierre Platter's button. Ah. So either I've typed it wrong, or my button instance isn't, isn't named properly. So let's go back to the timeline. I'm going to click on my buttons. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to undo it, go there, and make sure. Ah, see, I typed it wrong. Pierre Platts. This is bad. And this is what happens sometimes. You have to make sure that you've got everything uh, done right before you get into the heavy-duty coding. Because otherwise, forget it. Then you'll make mistakes. Okay, let's try that again. Just running it again. And I don't have any errors this time. But it doesn't do anything yet either, which is good. This is where I want to be. Okay, so I've written some code. Wait, where's my action script? Hey, where'd it go? How come my action script went away? Well, because my action script is contained in a layer, and I'm, not, and I'm not actually physically pressing any of the layers. I'm actually pressing on button one, right? If I want to see where my action script is, I've got to open this little window up here. And on the left, where it says actions, frame one, I click on it, and then there it is. So it doesn't disappear. It's there. But that's why it's good to keep a, an actions layer to house all your action script. Otherwise, it's going to be all over the place. Okay, so we've done that. Are you guys with me? All right, so we've, we've kind of coded all that stuff, but it still doesn't do much of anything right now. So here's an example of mouse events. We can do a mouse click event, a mouse move, a mouse down, a mouse up, very similar to some of the stuff we see in, on the website, right? Uh, mouse over, mouse out. All these are examples of built-in uh, attributes of the mouse event dot uh, or mouse event class. Okay, so these are all different. Uh, click, mouse move. These are all different kinds of events. All right. Uh, similarly, these are the most common commands for timeline navigation uh, for action script. Stop, play, go to and stop, go to and play, next frame, previous frame. All right. So or next frame and prev frame. Sorry. These things that move the playhead around. At the end of this, this session, you'll know how to navigate pretty good with the, the playhead. And we'll be, we have done the basic action script you need to wire up your project for next week. Okay? Let's go to the next part. So we've kind of got everything going, right? We don't have any errors right now, otherwise we'd have a problem. But you can actually check your, your, uh, um, your formatting or your code. In, um, in the action, Actions panel. So if I go here and I click this little check mark, like I said before, on the top of the Actions panel, and I click onto it, if there was compile errors, it would come up. There are no compile errors, so I'm good. I can also use this little formatting button here to auto-format my action script. So I click onto it, and then if there's anything that has to be auto-formatted, it would have been auto-formatted. But right now, it looks like my action script is just Marvy. Okay. Let's talk about these destination keyframes. So we've, we've moved the playhead somewhere, but it just keeps playing, right? We've got to make sure that it stops when it gets there, right? So it's going there and stopping, but it's not really doing anything. So we're going to consider a new layer on top of the buttons, and we're going to call it content, all right? And we're going to select frame 10 of the content layer, and we're going to put a, a keyframe in there. And we're going to do the same thing for frames 20, 30, and 40. Right? We're going to put a keyframe in each of these layers, 10, 20, 30, and 40. First, we're going to create this content layer. Right? So here we go, back to the timeline. Uh, it's going to be above buttons and below actions. We're going to go in, insert a new layer. We're going to call it content, lowercase c. We're going to go to frame 10. And we're going to insert a keyframe. And we're going to do the same thing for 20. Thirty and forty. All right. So we've inserted keyframes here, and again, what do keyframes do again? And what they do? Keyframes. What do they do? They mark any changes that we have in our timeline. So if I have an object and I put a keyframe, it'll actually keep track of any changes at that particular keyframe. The rest of the keyframes, it doesn't care. It'll copy all the, the same graphics and whatever forward. But as soon as we put a keyframe in there, we can make changes to that particular frame. Okay, so that's why we use keyframes. 
Think about a keyframe again if we're making a movie and if and if I'm in the middle of a pose, right? Every time I pose something and I change my pose, I want a keyframe there. And then anything that's in between the keyframes, I want to create in-betweens. Okay, so we've added in these keyframes in the content uh, layer, right? And now what we want to do, we want to go to keyframe 10, and in the library panel, we're going to drag and drop this Gable and Lawful um, uh, under restaurant content. We're going to drag this content onto the stage. So let's do that. So we're going to go to keyframe number 10. We're going to go to the library panel, and we're going to drag and drop this Gable Lawful uh, content onto the stage. And what we want to do, like the, the idea here, is to cover over the buttons with the content like this. Now, we have to position it a little bit better than this. So let's do that. We want to make it, well, we want to put it at X is 60 and Y is 150. So we'll click onto it. X, 60. Y, pretty much where I put it, 150. Right? So there it is. It's, it's kind of put in the right position. Right? And now what I want to do is I want to go to frame 20 and do the same thing. Right? With the next one. So I'll go to frame 20, go to my library panel, and drag and drop Gary Gary in there. Right? Again, the same locations. So again, X is 60, and uh, Y is 150. I'll put them in the same place. 60, 150. And the same thing goes for uh, frames 30 and 40. So Gary Gary, El Piatto. So imagine we're making a website here, 60 and 150. And the last one would be frame 40, dragging in pure platters. Again, same thing. 60 and 150. So we have content now in those frames. That's cool. All right. I've kind of added in all the content for us. 60 and 150. Each of those, each of these has a um, each keyframe has a different movie clip symbol, right? That's what these things are. So now when we use the, our, our flash, if I run the, the code, so command or control enter, and I click on Gable Lawful, right, it goes to the code. It goes to the picture. The problem is, it doesn't go back. <laughs> Once we've clicked on it one time, it's gone. Because now I cl can't click on any of the other stuff. That's a problem. So we have to kind of create another button now to take us back. So again, we're, we're, what was that? We have to go now. There's no other place to go. Gable, Gable and Lawful, this place in uh, Meridian City, this fake city where superheroes exist, right? I'm from Meridian City. I'm from Star City. That's right. Um, you know, this, this is the place where we have to go now. Okay, so, again, this is, each of the buttons are going to take you to a different restaurant, but we need to create a way back. Okay, so again, action script, what is it doing? It's just moving us around the timeline. So every time we click on a button, something happens. Do we have to do it this way? No. There's different ways of doing the same thing here. We can have our buttons themselves can be much more complex. They can have their own timeline. When you click the button, things happen on the button itself outside of the, our, our regular timeline that has nothing to do uh, with these other movie clips. The movie clips can be embedded. There's all kinds of ways of doing the same thing. Problem is when we use these fixed numbers, if I want to move my timeline around, then I got to change my, my action script, which is a pain in the ass, right? Better for us to have labels for the frames I want to target for my, uh, for my movies to happen. So we're going to create these frame labels. So how do we do that? We go to the actual keyframe uh, and we, we name it whatever we want. Label one is an example. So let's do that. So let's actually go to frame 10, right, in the content layer. And, and put inside the name of the label itself, call it label 1, and then label 2 for 20, label 3 for 30, and label 4 for 40. All right? So again, we're clicking on the actual content uh, layer, and now we're going into the name here on the label. The label name, and we're going to say label 1, label 1, 
And if you notice, label one appears in the timeline now, label two. What are we doing? I'm creating instances of each of these frames. I'm labeling these frames, giving them a position in memory for action script to respond to. That's all I'm doing. And I'm doing it so that there's a relative position now as opposed to an absolute position. If I want to move this keyframe around, a label will move, and then when I point to it, it won't be an absolute label. I can move it around wherever I want. But I've got to make that change now in action script because now they still point to uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, and so on, right? Okay, I want to make this change in action script here. I want to make it so that instead of go to and stop 10, it says go to and stop, and in, in quotations, label 1, label 2, label 3, label 4. Let's do that. So go back to the action scripts panel, right? And again, I'm going to do right from here, right? Oh no, where's my action script? Well, I've got to show it. So I use this little panel to slide it around. Here on the left hand side is a list of all action scripts I put in there. I've only got it for frame one in the actions layer, right? Here it is. And now in here, I put in quotes, label one. And I'm going to just take this and copy it and then change the name, change the number. Label 2, Label 3, Label 4. And now I'm going to save my work because I'm the that's the type of guy that I am. And then I'm going to run my movie to make sure it still works with all my labels. It does. So my labels work now instead of my uh, the uh, absolute positioning that I used before for my frames. Okay, this is a good thing, right? I'm here, I'm, I'm doing well. And let's go back to this. So I've got my frame labeled, I've tested my movie, everything works, but now I want to be able to go back. So I want to create this home or menu button to go back to, right? So we've kind of created this button for the different restaurants, we've got to create another button. Let's do it with code snippets this time, as opposed to writing it ourselves. Okay, so we're going to go to the uh, buttons layer. We're going to unlock it if it was already locked. And we're going to drag and drop this button called main menu onto the stage at 726 and 60. Okay, so here we are in the library. We're going to go to our buttons layer. We're going to unlock it. We're going to lock the other layers for now because I like locking them up, right? Just to make it easier for myself. Then I go to my main menu button, drop it in there. I'm going to put it at 726 and 60. So properties. 726 and 60. There it is. So it's in the right position. Good. Now I've got to name it. Remember, because in order for me to use this button, right, I've got to give it a instance name. Otherwise, I can't use a code snippet either, right? Now, right now, uh, it's not asking me to do so, right? I'm going to go back. Because right now, there is no name for the... Uh, um, for main menu, but I'm going to call it just to be safe in my mind. I'm thinking it's got to be called main menu button, like the same uh, uh, the same uh, convention we've used for all the other buttons. Let's just do that now in preparation. So I'll click onto it, instance name main menu underscore btn, because I got to be able to link it up somehow. Otherwise, what's the point? I'm going to save my work. Good. Okay. I'm going to unlock the actions layer and lock up my buttons layer again. Now, click onto it. And now it says, after I've got everything kind of put in, I've got to use these code snippets. Well, what code snippets are is pre written code for us, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the actions layer on the timeline. I'm going to choose window code snippets, or if I have the actions panel already open, I can go to code snippets, right? And in there, I'm going to choose Go to frame and stop. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. So let's try that out. So here, actions panel, code snippets, right? And then inside my actions, right, I'm going to go to frame and stop. And this is time, sorry, timeline navigation. Go to frame and stop. There it is. Now, if you notice, there's these little buttons here, right? When these little buttons come up, right, if I click on this button here, it'll show me the code. The first button on the top left is kind of the description button. So here, 
right? It's going to say clicking the object moves the playhead to the specified frame and stops. That's what it does, right? If I click the other button, the one with the uh, curly braces, it actually shows me the code that I can replace. So here's my actual code. So go to and stop, and it says five, right? What I want to put in there, right? This is the button. This is this five needs to change, right? This is the this is the actual code here. FL flash underscore click to go to and stop at frame, right? I want to change it to something else, right? So what I want to do is I want to take the quick pick, I want to take this instance name here and drag and drop it, drag this quick pick uh, or quick whip is what it's called, or pick whip, something like that, and kind of drag it to it connects with the main menu button like this, here and back at the, at the timeline. So I've got this little link here that's inside my code snippet and I'm going to drag this link, take a look for those of you who haven't done it yet, and connect it with my main menu button. And then all of a sudden, I've got some code that's in there already. Right? Now, I haven't inserted anything. I've all I've done is made a connection. I have to click the insert button for me to, for actually, for me to do something. All right? Are you guys with me? Okay. Ah, see, they changed. They called it home button instead of uh, <laughs> instead of uh, main menu button, and that's okay. We'll call it that in a second, right? We'll just rename it. We'll call it home button. So let's just do that. Let's just click uh, insert in the dialog. So I'm gonna click insert, and it shows me that I've inserted everything, right? And if I go to my code snippets panel, it's going to show me a bunch of this, this code that, they, that I inserted in here, list some, some comments. And guess what? Because I already named it main menu button and I told you guys to do it, it kind of inserted this thing as well. Right? But it says go to and stop five, and that's really not really what I want to do yet. I want to kind of go to and stop one, I think, if I'm not wrong. So main menu button has to change. Just to keep it the same, we're going to change it to so it says home underscore button. Okay, home underscore button. So we're going to click on the button. We're going to un, uh, unlock the layer, go to the button, and change this to home underscore button. Relock the layer back up. Go back to my actions panel just to keep the same. And then change this main menu button to home underscore button. Let's take a look at the entire code here. I've also got a bunch of a bunch of like this comment that I don't really care for. So I'm just going to erase it. So I don't need it. So now I've got an event listener that it gave me plus this function that says FL for flash underscore click to go to and stop at frame, which is what we've added in. The event mouse event, it gives me my a void for return and then go to and stop five. So it's another way of writing an event listener. We need to change this though because it can't be go to and stop five. It's got to be go to and stop one, right? So I'm going to change it here in the actions panel. Go to and stop one. All right, it's so the first frame. And I'm going to save my work. Okay. I've clicked insert already. I've done all this stuff. It's already in there. And now I can run my movie. Let's take a look at that. So I'll run my movie. And now when I click on Gable Lawful and click Main Menu, it goes back to 1. Gary Gary goes back to 1. Il Piatto goes back to 1. Pierre Platters goes back to 1. You guys all with me? Nice and easy. Create some buttons. This is all good. Code snippets. What you can do is not only can you use the code snippets that are in there, but you can create your own. And I'll invite you to read this on your own, because we're not going to create our own code snippet at this time. right? But if you really want to, you can create something that you use over and over again, uh, especially if you're creating something that's, that you're doing again and again to save yourself time and effort and to reduce, or if you're going to share it with uh, some other team member or something that they want to use. You, you wrote something that's really cool, and you want your team to use it so they don't have to spend their time reinventing the wheel. So I'm just going to skip forward. 
let's play the animation of the destination. So, so far, we've kind of got this interactive restaurant guide and we use go to and stop, right? But what about playing some animation when we click the button, like a hover event kind of an animation, right? Well, let's do that. So, we're going to create some transition animations. So, first, what we're going to do is we're going to move the, the, the playhead to label one in the content layer, right? Let's do that. So here we are, label one in the content. We're going to unlock it, label one in the content layer. Here we are. Okay, there's label one. Then what we're going to do is we're going to right click on the instance of the restaurant info, right, on the stage, and we're going to create a motion tween. Okay, let's take a look at that. So here we are. We're going to right click on this information here, and we're going to create motion tween. What it does is it creates another layer on top of, in the same time frame, the same timeline, right? So I'm just going to pull this up for you, guys, for you guys to see. Here's the extra layer, layer four, it says on my side, right? It's just above this, and it's created some space, this 10 frames of animation here that it's going to add in here. Okay? So it's actually a tween layer. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go... Um, to the properties inspector and in the alpha in the style pull down we're going to choose color effect sec section and we're going to uh, drop the alpha to zero and then we're going to move the playhead to, to uh, frame 19 just before frame 20 and we're going to change the alpha transparency back up to 100 so let's just go back so we're going to make it so that it kind of appears so right now right we're clicked on here we're still on frame 10 right and we're under color effect we're going to say alpha and we're going to go to zero so our frame is zero now we're going to go to frame 19. Here it is, right? Frame 19. And now we click on the same object. We're going to go alpha 100, right? So again, if you remember how tweening works, right? It's going to start off at zero uh, percent, so invisible, and then we're going to create a motion tween, right? That's going to create uh, a gradual uh, transition to fully, tr fully opaque from 0 to 100% in 10 frames. Okay? And we're going to do that for labels 2, 3, and 4. So we're going to have a bunch more uh, a bunch more layers here. Okay? Let's just do that. So here I'm clicking on, on frame 20 in the contents panel, right? I'm going to right click onto Gary Gary and, cl and, and click on create motion tween. Here it is. There's the motion tween. I'm going to right, I'm going to click onto it, go to my color effect alpha, reduce it to zero. Click on frame number 29, right? Right click on that area again, go to alpha and go back up to 100. Okay, now I'm going to go to frame 30. Do it again, right? Right click, create motion tween. Here it is again. Right? Go to my style, go to my alpha, go to zero, go to frame 39, do it again, up to 100, go to frame 40, right click, create motion tween, all right, change my style, alpha, go to zero, and then go to frame 50. Click onto it and raise my alpha up to 100. Save my work. Okay, so I've done all that. And if you notice, I've got all these extra frames, which you don't need. <laughs> Not to see anyway. All they are is they're just transition frames right now, right? So right now, let's leave them the way they are, but we're going to box them up later on because it looks kind of ugly to me. Right? We've got a lot, lot, lot of extra frames on the timeline now. And all these frames do is they create this uh, transition effect. So if I, if I run Control or Command Enter and I click on uh, Gable Lawful, then it should see, I should see a transition effect. Actually, I should see nothing because the frame doesn't stop. It kind of keeps going. We're going to talk about that in a second. All right. So we've done it, right? And... Um, So the go to and play command makes the flash, uh, you know, it keeps going, right? 
what we want to do is kind of create that, we want to create that go to and stop to go to and play. So we want to change the go to and stop command in, in action script to go to and play. Otherwise, we've told it to go to and stop, and when it gets to, when it gets to 20, it's, it's not going to move to the next frame, so it's going to stay invisible. Right? So let's go, to, let's go back to the actions panel. And hey, where's my action script? Oh, there it is. Uh, I'm saying that over and over again so you don't get freaked out when you're actually working on your own. You're going, how did the stupid action script stuff go? It's gone. It's missing. Where is it? It's silly. It's not silly. It's on the timeline. It should be in its own layer. So I wanted to go to and play instead of go to and stop. So I'm just going to take change this to go to and play. And again, why? Because when I go to the, that frame, I'm already stopped. So I can't do the transition. The transition starts at zero alpha and stays there. It doesn't move anywhere. Right? So we're going to go to and play. I'm just going to double click this. Control C, Control V, Command V, Control, sorry, Command C, Command V on the Mac. There we go. Go to and play is done. So I've done that. I'm saving my work. Okay, so I've, I've changed that to go to and play now, All right? Let's test the movie out. So I'm going to test my movie out, click on Gable Lawful, and now I get that transition effect, but look what happens. It goes through my entire timeline, right, because it doesn't stop. So what do I need to do? i got to create a stop event. I'm going to put some stops inside my timeline, okay? So i got to stop my animation right now, and I want to go to select 19. I'm going to select layer 19, I'm going to select layer 29, 39, and 49, and I'm going to put a stop in there. Okay? But I need to add in a keyframe. So I'm going to go to, in my actions layer, right, and just before the label 2 keyframe, right, I'm going to right click and choose insert keyframe. It's just the only way it can be done. So again, going back to, I'm going to kill this. So here's my actions, actions layer, and I'm right here in um, in keyframe number 19, or sorry, frame number 19, I'm going to right click, insert keyframe. But I'm inserting the keyframe on the actions layer because I need to insert a, a holder for my code that I'm going to put in. Remember I told you action script can be kind of put in anywhere you want, right? So there's different ways of doing it. Um, the traditional way is what we're doing right now. So I'm going to kind of put it in into this place right here. So I'm going to click on action, the actions panel and now my actions panel is empty. But rightly so, because now I'm pointing at frame number 19. And if you look on the bottom left-hand corner of the actions panel, it says actions colon 19, which means that's the frame I'm, where I'm going to put my code. I'm going to put in stop. Right? When I do such a thing, on the left-hand side, under scene, it shows me, under my navigator, I have, I have action script in frame 1 and action script in frame 19. It's right here. So I can go back and forth. Here's my action script in frame 1. And there's 19. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same thing for frames 29, 39, and 50. Actually, it should be 49, but anyways, let's just put it 50, like it says. All right, so here's 29 on the actions panel, on the actions layer, not 30, 29. Insert keyframe. Right here it is. I'm going to go to 39. I'm just going to insert all my keyframes first. Why not? Right, insert keyframe and 50. Insert keyframe. So I've got keyframes in, in different places on my actions panel. Now I've got to insert the code. So I did it already for 19. Right, I got to do it for 29. So here I am at, tw at, at 29. I'm going to go to my thing and put stop in there as well. So I'm going to stop the playhead at these different places. So there again, it looks like the panel on the left hand uh, left hand side here, the sidebar is updated with frame 29. Okay, go back. 39. Okay, into my actions panel. Stop. It updates on the left. And 50. Stop. So I've told Action Script to stop at these different, uh, or told the, the, the playhead to stop at these different places on the timeline. Now let's run the movie. So here I am, and as soon as I click on Gable Lawful, it goes there and stops. Go back to the main menu, Gary Gary, go to and stop. I'm playing it, it transitions, 
but it stops. It doesn't keep going over and over again. So that's all working nicely. We have to now, I want to try and kind of create these uh, special, same kind of special effect here. Instead of hovering over it to pop up like that, I want it to gradually uh, do the same kind of thing. Let's, let's see how that's going to work. Here we are. And we've kind of do that. Now we're going to do the animated buttons. And the way we do that is because, remember, we did these nested uh, movie clips last week. We're going to do the same thing this week. We're going to nest a movie clip inside the buttons themselves so that the buttons, when you kind of have this, uh, when you're in the over state, it's going to show the information. Okay, so how do we do that? In the library panel, right, we're going to double click the Gable Lawful Over Info. All right, so we're going to go back to the library panel. Here we are. And we're going to go to the Gable Lawful, right, this over info that we're going to have. Here it is. It's a movie clip, right? So that's what we've been dragging and dropping onto the stage. It's already prepared for us. So Gable Awful, double click onto it, and you see this over info right here, right? What we need to do, actually, let's guess what we need to do before we take a break. Guess. We've already done it a bunch of times. We had to add it, we have to do what with it? Don't look at the don't look at work. Right click and we're gonna add tweens, man. We're gonna do the same thing that we did for the other stuff. So we're gonna right click on this little object here and we're gonna go create motion tween, right? It's gonna add in, it's gonna say, hey, multiple objects are selected, you must convert them to a symbol. Do you do you care? Yes, fine, do it. But it's gonna add in all these different um, these different frames. We don't need so many. We're gonna kind of probably reduce that to 10, I'm guessing. Let me just, let me just remember how it was. Was it 10? Select Control A. They're already pre-selected anyway for us, right? We added this, these tween layers, right? We want to go only 10 frames, like I thought. Yeah. And we want to do the same thing with them. So here we are. We're gonna drag this from the last frame. We're gonna drag it back to the 10. Okay, so we're on frame 10. So there's only 10 frames of this stuff. Now we're going to go to frame 1, click onto it. We're going to right click, or sorry, click onto this, uh, uh, this image, this, this symbol now, right? Go to the properties panel, go to style, alpha, and reduce it to 0, right? And then we're going to go to the end, frame 10, click onto it, right? And then change my alpha to 100. We kind of do this. We're going to do the same thing. Uh, we're also going to name. We're going to uh, create another layer inside this button called Actions because now we've kind of added in between, but we got to make it so th so it stops again. Otherwise, we're going to have a problem. Right? It's going to keep on playing it over and over again. Right? So here inside, we're inside the button, and inside actually not even the button itself, but the Gable Lawful Over Info Movie Clip, and we're going to add in a new layer called Actions, another Actions layer. Here we are. In here, we're going to select uh, or enter a new keyframe key on the last frame inside the, the actions uh, layer. So here, insert keyframe. Here it is. Right now, we're going to open up our actions panel and choose stop. Okay, so we're going to go back into the actions panel and put in stop. Now, remember, just like before, when we do this, now it's got something else. Before, it was looking at scene as the root, right? And if you look on the left now, it, we're looking at the Gable Lawful Over Info that we're going to insert this action into. So now, not only do we have uh, uh, action script inside our stage in the timeline, our main timeline, but we also have it inside a symbol. Caution. Now we're installing, you know, action script in symbols as well. So we drag and drop a symbol in it. It already has action script embedded in it sometimes. So be cognizant of that. You might, if you, especially if you import symbols from other places, you never know what kind of be, what can be inside them. I'm not saying you're going to get a virus or something. I'm saying you don't know how it's going to work, and then you have to deal with it, right? Okay, so we kind of did that, right? So we we're going to create this this information. If we test the movie out now, if I just go back to scene one, right, and if I uh, go back and run the movie. So if I click on Gable Lawful, I actually hover over Gable Lawful. Look, it kind of animates in this transition effect. But we want to kind of do the same thing for Gary Gary 
Il Piatto and Pierre Platters. Let's just do that before we take a break. So again, going back to the timeline, I'm going to just uh, kill this. I'm going to go back to my library. And I'm going to do the same thing for uh, the overinfo for Gary Gary. So here I'm going to just uh, uh, select all, right, right click, create motion tween, press OK, reduce this back to 10 seconds. Here it is. Add a new layer, right? Create this, uh, oops, add too many layers. <laughs> Change the name of the layer to actions. Right, go back to frame one with this thing. Change my style alpha to zero. Go to frame 10. My style alpha to 100. Select frame 10 on the actions panel, insert keyframe, and go to the actions panel and put in stop. Okay, save my work. Do the same thing for the next one, and the next one. Go back to scene one, go into library, and Il Piatto, same thing. Highlight everything, right click, create motion tween. Yes, reduce it to 10. Done, go back to the first one, click onto it. Properties, color effect, alpha, zero. Color effect, alpha, 100%. New layer, actions. Frame 10, insert keyframe. Let's try that again. Go in there, stop. One more, and we'll take a break. Library. Is anyone faster than me? They're done? No? You guys, you little boys and girls, you're faster than me. You should be faster. You should be done. Not like me. All right. Go back to frame one. Properties. Alpha. Zero. Frame 10. Alpha 100, and add a new layer, actions, select frame 10, insert keyframe, and go in there and put a stop. All right, saved everything. Go back to the stage, and run. Let's see. Hover, hover. Animation, awesome, we're good. Okay, and if I click onto it, this works. This still works. This still works. All of them still work. So we're all good. We're almost finished. One thing to note: if I click on the the, the back here, you can see the log. My movie is 405 kilobytes. Remember, I asked you to make a movie with about 150 kilobytes. Please make sure you stay within. For your uh, your uh, uh, your ad has to be within 150 kilobits or KB for it to be um, compatible with those uh, advertising services. I'm just saying. I'm just saying it should be no problems to stay within, right? But some people go a little bit crazy. Okay, let's take a break, and we'll come back with.